Hello and welcome to Step by Step by Miriam. In this short tutorial I'm going to show you how you can assign a macro button to a macro. If you want to see what a macro, how to create a macro then take a quick look at my how to record a macro video. Um, I'll do a quick recap if you like on how to record a macro. Macros really are recorded keystrokes. So really before you begin a macro you should be familiar with the keystrokes and the commands that you're going to need to execute before you start recording since it will record everything that you do once you start recording the macro including any errors. So say for example I would like to record a macro that will give me uh, subtotals for all the salaries for each location in the country. I'm going to first of all select cell A1, it's a good starting place before you record any macro. So first thing I would like to do is to uh, click on the developer tab. Now if you do not have the developer tab showing on the ribbon then just simply click on the Microsoft Office button and when you do this it will give you the drop down menu. You then bring your mouse pointer to the bottom of the drop down menu where it says Excel options. This is 2007 version of Excel so that's why I'm getting Excel options down here. So I click on Excel options. Then we click on the popular category over here on the left hand side of the dialog box and once you do that you will then have access to show developer tab in the ribbon. Just make sure you have a little tick mark here to make sure that that's switched on. And then of course you click the OK down at the very bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we're ready to roll. So I have my developer tab and I want to start recording the macro. So I would click on record macro over here in the code group on the developer tab. So I'm going to click on record macro. Now once I do this, everything I do until I stop recording the macro is being recorded. So I click record macro. I'm prompted to give my macro a name, so I'm going to call it uh, location salary. You need to keep um, the names of your macros just one word, almost like you know your um, email addresses. Call it whatever you like, keep it one word. Location salary. I would like to store it in this workbook. Now if you want this macro available on all of your spreadsheets, then you need to click on the down arrow here and select personal macro workbook before you click OK. However, I'm going to keep it within this workbook and I'm going to select OK. My first step is to click on letter C, which is the column that has my location. Then I'm going to click on the data tab. I'm going to select the A to Z to group those together and say yes, sort them. So now you can see they're alphabetically sorted. My next step then is to click here, just to remove the highlight, to click into cell A1. And then I'm going to click on the subtotal command here on the outline group. And it's currently uh, advising me that it's going to make a change at each department. That's not what I require. I require a subtotal at each location. So I click on the down arrow and I select location. The sum function is exactly what I want and the salary is exactly what I want so I now say OK. And to see that in a better format I would click on the two level, the second level over here. So as you can see it has now literally taken all the information, sorted it all out by the different locations and it has summed. It has given me a subtotal of the amount of salary that I must pay out on each of the locations for my staff. So I'm now going to stop recording that macro. I click on the developer tab and I click here on stop recording the macro. So now my macro has stopped recording. So I'm no longer recording the macro at this point. Now to remove this uh, and to bring it back to its data, I click on the data tab and then click on subtotal and remove all the subtotals so that I can, I'm really back to my starting point again. I now wish to add little buttons just here on this spreadsheet so that any time that my information is in here, I simply click on the buttons and it produces the results for me just to make life a little easier. So the first thing I do 
is I'm going to go back to my developer tab, click here on the insert command in the controls group, select the button control, which is the very first one on the menu. So I click on that, hold my mouse button down and just drag it out. And you can see it dragging it out for whatever size I want. Yeah? And then I release my mouse button and it says macro name. What macro name would I like to assign to this button? I would like to assign the location salary. So this is location salary. And then I say, OK. And I will give this button a more meaningful name. And I will call it location. Location salary. Now I could right click on this button and select format the control. And here where it says alternative text over here for the web, alternative text. Let me just draw your attention to this. This is very good. And particularly if someone with maybe visual impairment, then they could, obviously the web text will be read, location salary, the button. And it's also very good for web browsers. Uh, properties, again, can you see here where it says uh, move in size with cells? That's kind of annoying. You know, it's the default, but it's sort of annoying because it will resize the button. So I'm going to say, don't move or resize with the cells. In other words, keep the button the same size, no matter what goes on with my spreadsheet. Now, again, you could come over here to font. And again, you could put a nice little color of a font on that. You could maybe put on a different style of lettering, different size of lettering, and so on. So you can play around with the form controls. Yeah. And OK. So location salary. And so now if I want to use my location salary, I just simply click on it and there it is. If I want to remove that data, back to data, subtotal and remove all. I could actually run a macro for that one as well, by the way, you know, to remove it all. Instead of me having to do those steps each time, I could do that. So a quick recap on how to design your button for your macro. Click on the developer tab, click on the insert command on the controls group, select the button command, which is the first one on the form controls menu, drag select your little button that you wish to use. This time we'll say department and we'll say OK. And I'm going to click again and I'm going to just give it a more meaningful name. Department salary anywhere just to remove that and again I can right click on it and I can do the same again format the control again I mean I can use maybe you know I don't know Arial and we use maybe a different color of a font maybe we bold that as well and so on again our web text just make sure these two are on the one line that's handy and um, properties again I don't want it to move and resize and make, become a huge button if I resize my cells so like keep this no matter what size my cells are and okay and again I might just have to resize that a little bit so we can see that there you go so again if I want to see my salaries by department I simply click on the department and there it is uh, by the way, when you run a macro, it's not cast in stone. It's just a quick way of executing the command. So I can still come over here and say, what is level one? That's a grand total. What is level two? What is level three? And again, so that's how you would assign a button to the macro. So thank you for watching Step by Step by Miriam. And keep a lookout for my other videos. Um, they're on my channel, Step by Step by Miriam. Thank you.